G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how to do on-page SEO so you can achieve those results that I've achieved up there, pushing out companies like WebFX and Hey Hey Treff. I've pushed them out. So let me show you the secrets on how to do on-page SEO so you can get results like this. Now for the uninitiated, what is on-page SEO? Well, on-page SEO is essentially where you go into your web page, something that you have control over, and you influence that in a manner which will be rewarded by the search engines. So for instance, you'll add in the titles and the keywords in places that Google would like to see them. That's essentially what on-page optimization is. Now, you might be interested in the thing behind my head right here, but we'll get to that in a moment because that is a very, very important secret to success when it comes to achieving results like I've got behind me. For this example, I'm going after SEO for electricians. So if we have a look at this page right here, we can see as an example, I'm not ranking up the top, still beating a Hatress, suckers. <laughs> Sorry. But you can see that I'm still here. I'm further down the page on page one. Now, this is for the US. This is for the US. Now, if we have a look at my actual page, we might be able to see why I'm not ranking up the top. It's pretty ugly. It's horrendous. It's not got the structure that is required from Google to be ranking in position number one. So how do we actually figure out what we would need? Because realistically, this was written by the content creator and put up here. Is it enough? Well, let me show you what exactly you need to do on how you can execute successfully with on-page SEO. Now, if you want to achieve success with on-page SEO, this is how you go about doing on-page SEO. You need tools. I'm going to be brutally honest, guys. If you want to compete against the best, the best Ahrefs, WebFX, if I beat them, it's because I've got the tools to beat them. It's that simple. Now, yes, you can go about this manually, and even behind me, I've got a manual sheet. So you might be thinking, well, Ronald, you can do it all man. You cannot. You need to start with your tools. I can't stress that enough. Now, two great tools that I would recommend for on-page SEO is Page Optimizer Pro. You guys hear me harp about it all the time. It's because Page Optimizer Pro is a fantastic tool. Quora is another great tool, but it is insanely expensive. But that's something you're going to need in really, really, really competitive niches. You will need access to a Quora report. But let me show you the example and what I'd be looking for in POP for my page. Now, as you can see here, I have used my existing page to run the report. And you can see that the content score is horrendous. Now, if you don't know anything about Page Optimizer Pro, there'll be a video linking above where you can go across, watch the tutorial, watch everything about Page Optimizer Pro so you can use it and get to this point. But for now, as we can see, I'm well off on the target word count. I definitely don't have 14 sections. You're like, Ronald, it's pretty obvious what you need to do, mate. You need to get this up to score. Yes, you are right, 100%. But for the purpose of this video, I want to give you the secret source on what I do, the whole process. So we're sort of using this keyword as an example, but let's also pretend that this is a really, really competitive game. So this is what I would be doing. The first thing would, I would be addressing the problems I've pointed out very, uh, very easily by pop. I've got to make sure that I go through and add all of this. Because as you can see, guys, I'm hitting absolute donuts. Nothing in there. Nothing in there is being hit. We can see that pop's pulled in in the main content. There's heaps of things that are being shown that I'm not hitting. All right. We can still see that I've hit a lot of the NLPs, which may be a bit of a coincidence for it ranking. Who knows? But this is just an example of the types of things that you've got to make sure you're looking at when you're performing on page SEO. So this is where you would start. Now, the most important factors when it comes to performing on page SEO, this is where I'm looking. I'm looking at the subheadings and I'm looking at the main content and I'm looking at the Google NLPs. Again, in-depth video on Page Optimizer Pro, go and watch that. That'll cover it more in depth. But let me show you where I start so we can get over to this secret stuff that I've got behind me over here. Now, you can see that I don't have a lot of the stuff on the page. So very clearly, before I was to even jump over and use the secret source behind me, I'd be starting in POP. So that is what I'd be doing. So in POP, and by the end of this video, by, by the time this video is launched, this page should be optimized and, and up. But you will see that my structure is done and all of this will be achieved in POP. There should be a pretty good score in POP. It's definitely not going to be a 35 it should be more than that. And the structure should be there. 
that is what I'd be doing. Now, the next step from there, something that I will stress the importance that you need to make sure that you're looking at is Google Entities. Now, Google Entities, when it comes to POP, is just simply down here in the Google Entities. All right, you click on that tab there, and you're going to notice the things that are in green and red. Now, where do I focus my efforts when I'm trying to bring in entities in the page? Well, I don't really go after three. So as an example here, we can see needs. I need to mention it like two times. Like it's talked about by my competitors two times. Should I be adding that in there? Eh, I probably won't worry about it. User experience though, that's talked about at least three times. Success, marketing agency, optimization. If we start going up, part, chance, these are all mentioned a lot more. Keyword research, strategies mentioned by five guys. Very, very important that I'm adding that type of stuff in there. Very, very important. So when you're looking at the using Page Optimizer Pro to perform on page SEO, make sure that you're looking at all of this. You're looking at all of this. ROI should be mentioned in there. But the final thing that I'll show you on POP before we jump across to my secretive, my ooh, voodoo magic type of spreadsheet, let me just show you a couple of things that you want to look at. And it's the page structure all right big reason i love doing things manually is because i get to put my own intuition into it so i look at the page structure so let's just say and again this is why if you're starting out in seo and you don't know where to go what to do or even you have a semi understanding guys i use page optimizer pro because it makes my life easier that's what you need you want to be looking at things like look at the uh page structures so if I go show all recommendations, I can see H3s. Well, all right, that's interesting. What's the lowest count of the H3s? Well, there's at least I need, uh, the lowest count is nine and the highest is 25. So that's saying I need at least 14, realistically 15 if you round up, H3s on my page. Interesting. H4s, now the lowest is zero. So do I really need it? Well, possibly the highest is 10 and then that's five. But again, that's where you can start to use your gut intuition. And that's where I start to pull away from the tools. So perfect example is right here, H4s, all right? Remember, Pop's looking at the top 10 results, okay? Pop's looking at the top 10 results. Do I actually need a H4 or not? What should I be looking at? Should I be looking like, is that because a guy in position number nine has zero and now it's throwing out the numbers? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can obviously set pop to, you know, look at the top competitors if you want, but I think it's a fantastic place to look at the first page with pop, then start doing things manually. So now I've covered what you need to be looking at in Page Optimizer Pro. And again, Page Optimizer Pro video, guys, that's where you'll get an even like I cover everything in that. That's where you'll get all that info. But let's jump across to the secret little thing that I have over here. So guys, this is my on-page SEO checklist. Now you're going to see it behind me. Let me just scroll through a little bit so you can see what it has on there. Now there's a fair few sections. This is not the be all and end all, but this is what I use after I've looked at something like Pop or Cora. Now mainly Pop, I'll be honest, Pop is, that's my go-to. But then I like to finish it off, especially if it's a competitive term, a keyword that I'm going after. I like to finish it off with this. Now, you guys can follow along and show, I'll show you exactly what I do. And you guys can have access to this template. It'll be linked down below. So go over and grab it. But before we jump on, put down in the comments how you guys approach on page SEO. Do you actually apply any importance to it or do you just prefer to throw something up with AI and get a lot of backlinks into it? I'm really interested to hear how you guys approach on-page SEO and if you use tools to help you get there. Let's move on. So as we can see here, here's the SERP. Here's the SERP. What I've done is I've opened up all of the competitors that are ranking in positions one to three. Now, what do I do? So this trusty little spreadsheet over here, I like grabbing position number one, pasting it in the top there, position number two, pasting it in there, and position number three. I'll grab them and paste them in there. Now, why am I only looking at positions number one, two, and three? Because really, they're the ones doing well. 
let's let's be honest. Where are most of the clicks going to go? One, two, or three? Yeah, I might get a couple of clicks down in position six where I am, but it's going to be few and far between. One, two, and three are doing the right things. So when we start pulling in averages and, and different statistical analysis, we're looking at numbers that might not actually be accurate by evaluating stuff that's down in position seven. They might always stay down there. That's why I look at position one, two, and three. Now, for this, you are also going to need the SEMrush SEO Quake extent, completely free, guys. And I'll make sure there's a link to that. SEO Quake, completely free. There'll be a link down below. Now, you are going to need that. So the very first thing that I want to assess is the word count. This is where I'm calculating what's important when it comes to on-page SEO. And on-page SEO is all about working out the numbers. So I'm going to come over here to the blue Corona, and I'm simply going to go up to my extension and hit that button. I'm going to go to page info, and it's going to open up this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and I can see here total numbers of words, 3,377. So competitor number one has 3,377. All right, you just paste it into that cell there. And you're going to start to see all numbers and formulas and stuff starting to pop. But again, all of this is built in, so it's nice and easy for you. Second one, WebFX. Same thing, guys. We're opening the extension. We're going to page info. Scrolling down. 2364. 2364. Cool bananas. Done. Let me just try and zoom in a little bit so it's still getting most of the info for you guys. All right, and I'll make sure that I'm moving my boof head, so don't worry. Do not worry. And again, link to this spreadsheet down below, guys. So, and then competitor number three, these guys. All right, let's do the exact same thing. So all we need to do is page info, scroll down. Ooh, that's a big, big boy, boy. 7641. Oh, they're going crazy. Now... What do I want to be looking at? I'm trying to like sneak all this in so you guys can see everything. If I bring this over a little bit more, I'll try and close, bring that one over, bring this one over. Yeah, just so we can start to see. We can start to, I want you to be able to see everything. So now 7641. Now I need to look at my own page. So this is my own page. So same thing. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see what's going on here. Page info. Scroll down. 1986. So I'll enter in my details in here. And what I want you guys to see is this information here. So you're going to see in this column right here, guys. See average? So average right here. All right? Average. This is the average word count. Now, I'm not going the mean in this. I am not going the mean. I'm going the average for this. I'm only looking at three. Numbers are going to be skew if and mean might land me in the middle, but because I feel like because it's not generally the five that I've shown you in the past, means okay when there's five. I feel like average is slightly better when it comes to there's only three results. Now, if you look in this, the difference column, you'll see this page right here. You can see and it's red. So it's going to go red. And this is what's very cool about this. It's going to go red if I'm under. And it's going to go purple if I'm over. So over optimized. So immediately, guys, like you're going to be able to look at this and be like, uh oh, it's red. I'm under. This is what we want to be looking at. So you can see here that it's telling me that if I want to be up with the top three, I've got to write an additional 2,474 words. You know, now if I look at this and go look at these two, and then I try to go average here, I can see that the average is a lot less. It's a lot less. I'd only need 2,800. That guy is an outlier. Number three, he is an outlier. And this is a perfect example. So what would I be thinking to do? Would I need to necessarily go up to the 2,474 missing keywords if I was to do on-page SEO? Well, no, I wouldn't. I honestly would not. I would be looking at the position number one and two, and I would be sitting here and going, okay, all right. I need to sit there and be above these two, I, but I don't necessarily need to go out and add an additional 2,474 words. Guys, this is why SEO still will require some human intervention and why we are kind of safe from AI now. Because as you saw here, I have a template. I've looked at Page Optimizer Pro. What's right? 
well, this is where you will still need your intuition. So I love these types of videos where there's situations like this because I can walk you through my process of thinking and I would sit there and go, well, the first two aren't ridiculous. Now, the only reason I reckon these guys have achieved that is just because they've just thrown so much rubbish that they're up there. And that's probably how they've achieved the rank. So relying on these guys is an important factor. Eh, that's something you want to look at. But this is the spreadsheet. This is the power of this spreadsheet. Now, the next thing is keyword density that we want to have a look at. All right, so I just want to make sure, like this is my page. So what I'm going to do, and this is where it starts to become a little bit more interesting for you. On the page, you'll come across to density. Now, I would strongly suggest following along here. Very, very important. Now, what keywords do I select to identify as something that I should be talking about? Well, the main keyword I'm going after, of course. So the main keyword I'm going after, now the way I would look at this, so let me just come back over to my page and, and very clearly explain this. So if we look at SEO for electricians, there's realistically two different words in here. There's SEO, search engine optimization, and electricians. Now, would I classify that as one whole, like basically one whole sentence word, whatever you would call it? So I'm looking at the density of that specific word. No, I would not, because these are separate terms. Now, anything that ties into these terms immediately, though, I would consider important. So SEO, what would tie into SEO? Search engine optimization, local SEO, local search engine optimization. They're words that would tie in with SEO. Paid ads, anything that would be immediately connected around that. Electrician, contractor, electrical worker, that type of stuff there. Uh, SEO for contractors. These types of words are starting to tie in directly. Now, if would it be a pool worker? No, no, that's not something I'd care about. So if I come back over to the densities here, now you can start with your page so you can input the information or you can start with page number one. Because if you think about it, you're going to have things missing. So then you're going to add them in and then you're going to go over to page one. So start with page one. So I'll come to page one, which was blue, uh, blue Corona. Uh, now, what I need to do, densities. All right. So you can see over here, right next to my head, I have keyword densities compared to one, two, and three. So what did I say? The words we're going to look at, SEO, going to be one of them because we can see right here. Now, typically I'll look at things that are over 1% additionally as well. So SEO website, marketing. All right. Very, very good. Now I'll go down. You'll click this tab over here. It'll take you down to the two keywords. Blue Corona, that's their brand name. Electrician SEO. Look at that. Electrician SEO. All right. Now I know that it's down a little bit, but as we can see here, it's found in the title and it's found in the description, and it's found in the H1. SEO services down here, we can see that it's also found in the title, the description, and the H1. And you can also even do the same thing up here. Now, you can see learn. It's like, yeah, it's in the description. If we come back up further and further and further, we'll see services. We'll see electrician. We'll see electrical. You can also add those in there, definitely, definitely, definitely. And I will be adding them in there momentarily. But let me just go back down to the two keywords. Now, because we uh, wrote it, the keyword, the target keyword is electrician, uh, SEO for electricians. What we want to do is we want to scroll even further down. Let's go to the three keyword table. Now, you want to just see, you want to just see if electrician SEO uh, or SEO for electricians is actually even popping in here as a density. Because if it's not, that is kind of interesting. So regardless, my main keywords are going to be SEO, which is already in there, and electricians, electrician or attritions. Now, this is something that, because there's an S on the end, this is something that you would want to pay attention to. So I just go forward slash S because there might be electricians and electrician. It might be considered the same in here. And yes, that can happen. So you just want to be aware of it. Now, once that's done, once I've quickly run through, you can go back here and go, okay, anything that's found in 
the titles and anything that's over one percent should really be calculated so i would be adding as an example services i'd be definitely electrician see electricians in there and it hasn't pulled in necessary electricians so electrical electrical uh description leads it's quite light it is mentioned a few times so you can see it's repeated 10 times but the density is quite light contractors it's in, uh, in the title and in the description mentioned nine times but as we can see it's sort of un, under one percent would i be looking at that what i would be doing is i might throw it over here contractors and just keep scrolling down a little bit increase it's quite light it's only in the description only in the description only in the description let's go to two we can see electrical electrician seo you know that is mentioned a few times in electrician seo now something i do want to have a look at is let's go control f and electrician so we can see electrician electricians so electricians is mentioned electricians with an s on it as well so ideally we do want to have that set up where one's got an n one's got an s Right, so one's got an N and one's got an S. All right, so that's what I want to be looking at. Now, I know this might seem a little bit confusing. It's like, how is he picking out these keywords? And honestly, guys, it is a bit of a gut feeling uh, when you start going with it. But what will happen is when I jump over to the competitor, I'm going to start to notice something popping up. And this is why you use Page Optimizer Pro, because again, I'm using a lot of intuition here, a lot of trusting on my gut, reliability. So I can come over here and I'm looking at a second competitor now. Now let's go across to the density and we'll have a look at the density over here. But we can start to see SEO. Okay, that's also mentioned there. We can see services. We can see electrician. Yep, bang. All right, we're starting to, you know, pick some things up. Start, start that's interesting it's in the title and the h1 should i be talking saying start a few times what else marketing marketing is above the one percent let's go down to the two keywords let's see what we've got digital marketing okay i'm going to throw that that in there digital marketing throw that in there just because it's got a very high density seo services i believe no we don't have seo services so i'm going to throw that in there and you can start to see what I'm actually doing. So I'm having a quick look through SEO4. Ooh, SEO4, that's interesting. SEO4, because that's actually mentioned a lot of times, a lot of times. So now that should be a three word because it should say uh, as, like SEO4 electricians. So four electricians. So there we go. Now, this is again, perfect example. Oh my goodness. I'm so... Uh, I'm losing it tonight when it comes to spelling electricians. Electrician. Oh, I've missed the T. My goodness. We all have those days. Let's be honest here, guys. <laughs> uh, so, for electricians, and then we can say SEO4. Now, you can sit here, and if we come down to the three words, right, it should be popping in. SEO4 electricians. Bang. Now, now, how do you equate this? Again, I would be looking at this in this scenario because these guys are in position number two. I would try and look at this whole word as one thing. So SEO for electricians. All right. Why? Because my guy has done it. He's been able to pull it in as a three keyword. All right. Now, that's very, very important to me. Now, you can, this is where it becomes a little bit tricky too. When you start focusing on one word, and three words in the densities, you start looking at all of this. What can happen is it can start to becoming a little bit dramatic. So if, as an example, it's like, well, we have SEO4 here with two words, and then we have this up here. So what's the right density? Because if I keep putting SEO, 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 well, won't this muck it up? Now, yes, it can. It absolutely can. So... When you are performing this type of work, make sure, make sure that you're only really taking the things that make logical sense. Now, I know that might sound dramatic, but if you run it through pop, 
and you have everything else is done pick the things that make logical sense as an example the seo4 and four electricians does that make logical sense kinda kinda but what should i rather be focusing my efforts on probably just seo for electricians that makes more sense that's the type of stuff that we want to do so now that we've got the general gist i've walked you through how to look at keywords what to try and pick out what to do now you can make this list as long as you want just keep adding tables literally adding the tables because it will start to be quite long but generally speaking i'm really only focusing on my target keyword because i've already got all my entities from pop I've already got the other surrounding things that are, are different types of terms. And if they're up here, they'll be flagged by me as well. I'll see them in the densities. I'll see that they're talked about a lot. There's a large percentage of the content that they're talking about. So what do I do? Well, let's start. So let's go back to competitor number one. Now, SEO, what's the density that they're talking about? 2.1%. All right. So I'd go 2.10. When it comes to website, what's the density for website? 1.3, 1.33. What's the density for marketing? 1.06, 1.06. You're starting to get the gist. So as an example, electrician SEO, I'd want to try and find that. So I'd go here, copy this, and just go back over here, control F. Now you can download this guy, so it's a lot easier on yourself. So electrician SEO, as an example, is... 0.65 now so you're getting the gist of what i'm doing i'm not going to go down and do everyone otherwise this video is like 16 years long but you get the gist of what i'm doing so now i'm going to go to competitor number two same thing seo what am i looking at 3.17 i'm looking for website 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 what are they talking about point point five nine marketing all right, what are they talking about? 1.82. Electrician SEO, same thing, guys. Control F, bang, electrician SEO. Okay, 0 0.68, 0 0.68. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? Seeing how this is very important. We can see in this average column over here, we can start to see this going on over here. Look at this. So competitor number three, same thing. You're gonna have to do the exact same thing. SEO, what's the density? Let's go to the bigger page and make it a lot easier on us, won't it? All right. Okay, that's interesting. Um, hmm. I think she's had a little bit of a problem loading here. I'll go back to page info and show you about changing it up. Uh, yeah, all right. Box is in the way. The actual box from the tool is in the way all right that's fun that's really interesting all right what i'm gonna do is i'll be back in a moment <laughs> now i'm not really sure guys unfortunately i'm having some problems specifically only with uh dag marketing so i'm just going to jump into the keyword densities on on the home page where it's a page info and we'll have a look so if we go seo you can see over here it's 2.13 2 2.13 2 if we go website, website is a 0.55. If we go marketing, marketing's not even there. Let's go see all. So it expands it a bit more. Of course, this is going to be in the way. Yep. Apologize for this, guys, but this is what happens when tools let you down, I guess. Let's come back up here. I think because there's just so much, like it's so much. It's point, I'm going to look behind it. It's 0 0.39, 0 0.39. And the final one is, let's just look at an electrician SEO, two words. Let's do this. Electrician SEO uh, is 1.2. Okay, 1.20. All right. So that's what we're looking at, specifically that. That is what I'm trying to ascertain. So you can start to see over here all of this information. So we can see the average. This is what I'm trying to look at. I can see that the average density for the keyword SEO is 2.4. So what's my page looking like? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. 1.66. What about if I go website? 0.91. 
What about if I go marketing? 0.55, 0 0.55. What about if I go electrician SEO? Let's have a look at that. Is she even anywhere to be found? No, it's not even on there enough. It's donuts. It's absolutely nothing. So if I go zero, nothing. So perfect example. This is how we figure out the densities. This is how we figure out the keyword density. Now, you would just do this for every single keyword that relates and ties in. Now, like I said, you can double up in ways like he's realistically a double up. So just be cautious of those numbers. Predominantly focus on the ones that are really in question, like this, these ones here. And you can see over here, here's our average. And then if we look at my page, so this is my information. I've had to put my information in here. And like I said, immediately, just from the coloring, I can see right above me, right up there, I can see that I'm well short. I'm well short when it comes to SEO. I'm actually over-optimized with the keyword density for website. I'm under-optimized when it comes to the, the keyword density for marketing. And I'm also under-optimized when it comes to electrician SEO. Now, like I said, if you notice, these guys are pretty close on a lot of their terms. They're pretty close. These guys, in a way, are sometimes a little bit more and under. So again, where am I placing my emphasis? Well, on this, I would still be, because den density, regardless of word count, the density is still there. So how many times on average for the percentage in that content is popping up? That's why the dentist density is actually quite important. Now, what do I like to do from here? Well, now I start to like looking at the headers and how often my keywords, my main focus keywords, so electrician, anything related to electrical, electrician, electrical, all of that are in the headers, SEO. Let's have a look at that now. So as an example, I'm going to go over to the blue corner page. Now you can just simply use something like a plugin to make your life a lot easier than going through and looking at it going, oh, is that a header? Oh, is that a header? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's it. You don't need to do that. What you can do is you can come over, you can use something like SEO Minion, or you can just use this, what is this, maple syrup, whatever one this was, honestly. Uh, SEO Pro Extension. There we go. You can use that. So what you want to do is you want to go, okay, let's look at what headers are being used. So electrician. So as an example, electrician SEO, electrician SEO services. I like looking, so electrician, remember these guys are number one and they're ranking for that keyword yet they have electrician SEO. So what I can do is I can paste these headers in here. I can go SEO. Because start with the H1 guys. H1 tells you what's the most important stuff. Now we can go electrician SEO and services. We've got that there. Now, what I'm going to do, let me just make that a little bit smaller because it's ugly. Now, like I said, SEO for electricians. All right. That's another keyword that I know I would want to be in there. So I'm looking at the H1s and I'm trying to really determine. So we've got SEO, we've got electrician. And for argument's sake, let's do electrician is electricians. Just for argument's sake, guys, because it's, it's in the eyes of Google, it's the same. So let's go through and have a look. So we've got services mentioned. All right. So we've got marketing service, industry services. Now that can be pulled in from the top parts of their headers. But is it is an important thing to look at. So if we start with services, we'll go once. We'll go twice uh three times oh look i'm sneaking all this in there okay so they've got four times they've got services mentioned all right as an example four times now seo something that might might make this a little bit oh i can't do it can't do it um something you can do to make this a bit easier guys is using something like seo minion and exporting all of the headers that is something you can actually do. It does make your life a little bit easier and you can even export the headers with this as well. So just to save you a minute of time, control F, type in your keyword. I might even be able to actually show you that on this. Let me let me see if I can show you how it... Yeah, I can't have it up and show you. <laughs> so unfortunately, we do need to do it the slow way, but I think you're getting the gist. So same if I was to go 
like so let's just focus on services so i can smash it all out so for you so we're not sitting around here all day but ideally like i said before you're looking at the h1s and you're looking at your main keyword so seo for electricians you're not really need needing to count the four but the main thing is everything else so if we look, we're looking for services. So let's have a look. Increase three, three times. Okay. So competitor three has that in the headings three times. All right. Now let's go to the final competitor and let's have a look. Same thing. This guy's going to have a massive this is 7,000. This is going to be a lot. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, so they've got it too. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's have a look at mine. Let's have a look at mine and see how many times we've got service, service services mentioned. Uh, one, but that's from the head. Uh, that's from the footer. So we've got one. So as you can see here, this is the same concept, guys. So you do exactly the same thing for electrician or electricians. If it's a plural, I still look at it the same way. So what does this tell me? What does this tell me? So my keywords for my headers, I'm sitting here going, okay, well, services, as an example, was an important one. SEO and electrician would also be the important ones. So if just as an example, you'd need to do this for every single one, but I'm not going to sit here and make you waste an hour and a half, but you can sit here and see immediately, okay, I'm under optimized by two. So it looks like I'd be needing to add an additional you know, service services keyword into my titles or my headers at least an additional two times. And you do that for every keyword that really you're going after. So, you know, you're not going to necessarily, services is where I would start to draw the line. But SEO and electricians is where I'm really looking at. So SEO, electricians. So same thing. You'd be going through and doing the exact same thing. But guys, export the results. Add the do a do literally export the results, upload it to Google Sheets, and then from there just create a formula, look at them all, and export it easily like that. It'll take you 10 minutes compared to imagine doing this manually, as you saw. So that's just a little bit of a caveat so you can get around that quicker. Let's move on to the next step. Now, internal links. So internal links are a really important factor and something that we will need to look at as well when we're trying to perform on-page SEO. So when you're trying to figure out how to do on-page SEO, you want to look at the internal links as well. So see this here, guys, internal links. It's saying that there's seven internal links on that page, something that you want to take note of. Now, when I'm looking at internal links, how much weight do I put on this? How important do I think it is? And I think we'll see some fluctuations in numbers. So it's page info, come back up to the top, 211, immediately fluctuations. So we can see that's that's vastly different. Now, what am I trying to determine by looking at the internal links? 50. Okay. Really what I'm just trying to figure out is to make sure that I'm stacking up or somewhere close. Because I again, I guarantee you, you're going to start to notice a common theme between things that aren't really close. So you can see here it's saying 45. Now, all of my competitors are realistically beating me, but there's that one guy with 211 internal links. What do I think about that? Well, in my situation, would I be going out there and building 211 internal links or at least 112? I would be going, well, they've got 50, they've got 77. You know, I would say probably 80 is going to do me fine. So that's how I'd be looking at this. Again, like I said, this is the beauty of really doing it manually. If I was to sit here and rely on numbers, the computer's telling me to do 112. Do I think that's excessive? Absolutely. It's saying that I'm 67 internal links short. That's excessive, guys. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd be going, well, he's got 50. He's in position three. He's got 77 and old mates in position one. He's in position two with 211. Well, I'd be looking and going, well, I need at least 80. That's how I'd be looking at it. Now, backlinks. You want to look at the backlinks as well coming into the page. So we can see we're going to have to go back. So backlinks, this is on page SEO, I know, but so you can start to get a bit of an understanding. Competitor one has 41. Regardless, like this is a part of the sheet, guys. You can see that competitor number two has four. 
you can see that competitor number three has seven and then you can see how many do we have it's saying that we've got 30 30 links so it's actually going to be that realistically we're over now are we over no it's a good thing i'd be sitting here going okay well i don't really need to build any links now i know this is on page seo not off page seo but off page seo is going to play an important role now so that's the next step now the final things the final things that we really want to look at and pay particular notice to is the header count what type of headers are being used so let's also work that out now you'll just go back to the page and you can use again this is uh this extension right here what is it uh seo pro extension i always forget <laughs> but you can see what you can do is you can immediately add the numbers in from competitors so they're only using h1 because they might be a little bit sneaky and they might be using a few of them they're using 12 they're using 7 and they're not using any h5 so that's what we can start to see there we go to competitor number two what has he got he's got one five five twenty eight and six and remember how i was saying in pop pop will tell you oh it's zero or it's ten well what's the actual number this is why doing it this way is important because we're going to get the actual number so one sixteen fourteen and four all right here we go so now let's look at mine let's see how many we've got be absolutely peanuts one seven four and three all right so we can see this here look at the difference look at the difference to the averages so remember it was h3s we we're looking at uh we we're looking at uh actually no it was h4s and there was even zero don't use a h4 you're like wait a minute well, I'm saying I've got to use at least 13. And again, again, look at this guy. Number two, what they're doing is a little bit cheeky. 28? That's insane. That's insane how many H4s they've got for their page. And it'll be because of the way they're structuring their page. It's maximized for conversions. But you can see we've got seven and four are here again, which is more realistic. So would I be sitting here going, I need 13? I need 13? No, no, I wouldn't. But I would be going, I need at least, at least probably seven. Seven H4s is how many I need. So that's where, again, you might notice that the spreadsheet says, well, Ronnie, you've got to add 10 more. You don't necessarily need to look at it in such a way. So that's very, very important. Look at the head accounts and you can actually ascertain what the page structure needs to be. Remember, big, big secret for when it comes to on-page optimization. Now, images same thing we want to look at images images play a role in helping a web page rank because if you look up uh what is it website free website audit pretty competitive term i rank for that but it's in like position 80 yet i'm going to add some images and let's see where it goes over the next couple of months there needs to be some images on there because i've found if you have a web page and you do and the serp calls for images and you don't have images the likelihood that you're going to rank drastically goes down so let's have a look so i'd be going back to competitor one same thing using the free plugin and i forget it every single time seo press whatever it is now it's saying that the images there's 35 images 35 competitor number two has 40 And old mate will probably have a gazillion. No, he's got 21. So how many do I have? What have I got? Probably like two or three. I got 11. There's 11. Now, this is an important factor. I would be paying close attention to this, guys. I'm 21 short of the average. I'd definitely be maxing that up. So there needs to be more images in there. But again, it's logical because I'm short on word count. I need to add in at least 21 images. Probably not going to be able to get 21, sneak them in there. But the idea is you can start to see a bit of a pattern here. And the final thing when it comes to the on-page stuff that we're going to look at with my spreadsheet, let me show you right. So schema, 
Now, does schema play a massive role in ranking a website? Yeah, I, I, I think it does. I think it does. I think as you start to get more and more competitive, it starts to play a role because realistically, once it gets competitive, it's all those little details that will help you get into position one compared to position two or three. So how do we determine what schema is on the page? Now, there's a couple of tools you can use and you can use the schema.org evaluator. You can essentially look at it. But I've created an actual custom, custom script that rips the schema immediately. So if I look on this page, I'm on this page here, I go click on schema review. And what it does is it actually rips all of this schema. Now, you might look at this and go, oh, Ronnie, that's too much. And that looks a bit ugly. Yeah, you might think that, but I like being able to look at it like this. Now, why do I like that? Because it's pulling in all of their information. So what can I do? Well, let's just say I don't have local business schema. What I can do is literally use their schema against them. I can simply come in here, change out the uh, blue uh, Corona. I can change that out to Osborne Digital Marketing. It's brilliant. Now, I've got a secret for you guys. If you scroll up here, you're going to notice that this script that literally did that schema pulled it all off. And you guys can have access to this completely free. All you'll need to do is set up a bookmark add that into the destination and this javascript will run automatically like it did for me so when i click that button i pulled that info down so if i go into fx do the same thing schema review it's going to pop up with all the schema they have on the page and again this is where you can start to look at and grab out the top schema and easily edit it for yourself so you can start to copy and see what they're doing edit out your information Happy days. Now you should know how to do on-page SEO. Now I know it's quite complicated, but let me give you some final tips before we sign off. You are going to need to use something like this. Like you are going to need to approach it in a unique way because think about it, like truly, truly think about it. If there's 10 million results, like I said, for the carpet cleaning result, as an example, or look up roofing SEO, see where I am for that keyword, roofing SEO, extremely competitive. Now, there's a lot of people going after those keywords. So if I don't do this step, how do I win? How do I see something unique? Because if everyone else has access to Page Optimizer Pro, how do you win? How do you win? It's the way you interpret those reports. And that's why using something like this checklist here, this spreadsheet will really, really, really help you because you want to look at those words that will matter. Something that you want to focus on is you are going to need a tool, guys. You could not just do what I've shown you today because, again, it's all kind of guesswork intuition. It is challenging, but if you, I assure you, if you apply this a few times, you're going to pick it up and you'll start to see what POP is actually looking at. So you understand optimization and on-page optimization a lot more. So when you are trying to figure out how to do on-page SEO, you'll understand how the tools work. You'll understand what they're looking at. Now, make sure, make sure you do not buy into this nonsense about you don't need to buy backlinks. It, I'm saying it's more prevalent out there right now. You're going to need links. Perfect case in point, guys. If we scroll down here, all of them, all of them have backlinks coming into them. All of them do. Now, at the end of the day, yes, have good on-page SEO. But here's a perfect case in point, guys. Here's a perfect case in point. I have 30 links coming to my page, yet I'm not up the top. I'm on page one, yeah, but I'm not up the top. Now, obviously, you know, the minutiae of how backlinks, the type of backlinks, all of that comes into it. I might only have one referring domain. They might all be different referring domains. You know, I, we get it. But my point is, do not sit there and think on page is just enough. It is not, but you'll save money. Because if you think about it, if I can increase now my rankings by tweaking my on page and moving that up higher, I save money on backlinks. So again, you're maximizing your return. So that's a really awesome feature of on page optimization. A lot of people actually overlook that and go straight to backlinking. I'm the opposite. I want to save a dollar. I want my systems to be efficient. So guys, I hope, I know it's been a long video. Make sure you let me know down below on how you go about on page optimization and your secret tips and tricks. You can gain access to this completely free link down below. You can get this and then you'll be able to get my schema tool as well. It'll pull all the information from you. You can follow this, make a copy. 
If you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Make sure you share this around for me. Thank you for being a part of the Osborne Digital Marketing team and I'll see you around. Cheers, guys.